and understanding some of the most foundational architecture principles is key to building a good architecture for your application. In this video, we will have an overview of some of the foundational architecture principles that are essential to understand the design choices of your application. So, without any further delay, let us get started. Hello and welcome. In this video, we will look at dependency inversion, separation of concerns, single responsibility, the try or don't repeat yourself principle, and persistent ignorance. So, let us start by looking at dependency inversion, which is one of the solid principles. Indeed, dependency inversion is the D in solid. It will help us with decoupling different modules within our application. Creating loose coupling is one of the key aspects of creating maintainable and easy to test software. To apply dependency inversion, we are going to introduce abstraction, typically interfaces. Normally, dependency between these different classes go from top to bottom, so from high level components that contain the business logic to the implementation components. But to create dependency between these components, it's difficult to swap these and hence also difficult to test later on. Once we introduce abstraction to decouple the different components, this problem will be solved and we will get loosely coupled components. Dependencies should thus be pointing to the abstraction, not to the details. Let us have a look at an example here. When we write code, Typically, we will have a number of classes. Class A depends on B, and Class B depends on Class C. To use Class B and Class C, we will introduce a reference from the one class to the next. Hence, we are creating a tight coupling at compile time. When running this code, A will always use B, and Class B will always use Class C. Testing the code, for example, in A, becomes more difficult because it is tightly linked to the code in class B. Now what if we introduce dependency inversion here? What we have now changed is that we now have an interface B which is implemented by class B and similarly we have also introduced an interface C and a class C. When writing the code in A we are now using the abstraction which is interface B thus creating loose coupling. It's important to understand that both uh, the high-level class A and the low-level class B depend on the same interface, and that's the abstraction. Hence, we are inverting the normal dependency direction. At runtime, the concrete implementation of class B are used, and the normal flow is still used, but different implementations of interface B can now be used and thus the cause is loosely coupled and can be tested much more easily. Separation of concerns is another key principle and I will assume you already have heard of it or are already hopefully applying it today. Separation of concern is also part of the solid principle. This time it is the S we are talking about. At its core, it states that we need to write our application split it up into different blocks of functionality, each covering a separate concern. A concern could be anything, but each block should just be doing one single job. Don't write your code on large chunks of code that do everything from, for example, going to the database on one line and on the next line updating the UI. Applying separation of concern or SOC for short leads to more modular code. Each module will do one single task, and therefore it encapsulates all logic for that functionality entirely. For anything else, it will use a different module. A good example is a logging component. When we write our application, we don't want to include code that does the logging in each and every component. Now instead, we use a logging component that knows how to do logging. Other component will use the logging component for all their logging needs. Then we have separated out the logging concern. 
When writing a typical layered architecture, each layer is also basically applying separation of concerns. We are separating the UI from the code that contains the business logic and that in turn is separated from the code that contains the business access logic. Separating out concerns into different components also makes the code more maintainable. Another key concept we are after for our architecture, quite closely related, is single responsibility. Single responsibility is a term we know from object-oriented programming, which states that a class should just have one responsibility, which is the single reason to change it. Anything else should uh, go in a new class. This single responsibility is encapsulated entirely by this class. Applying this pattern also leads to a more modular systems. We are adding smaller classes instead of constantly adding functionality to existing ones. Since we don't change existing classes, we will less often break existing functionality. Now we can bring this object-oriented principle also to the level of application architecture. Think again of a layered architecture with a UI layer, a business logic layer, and a data access layer. Each of these layers should be responsible for just one part of the functionality of the system. The UI layer is entirely responsible for the presentation of the application while working with the data persistent system is entirely up to the data access layer. The dry principle is another important one. If you have never heard of it, you may be thinking, should I be drying off my code? Of course not. It is an abbreviation for don't repeat yourself. Applying dry is something I really hope you are doing all the time in your current projects even if you don't really know that you are doing it. It states that you shouldn't be repeating code to cover a specific functionality throughout your application. If you are doing the same thing in multiple places, you are bound to make errors since you need to make the change in multiple places instead of just one. Less or even better, no duplicate code at all. Thus, encapsulating a certain functionality and specific component makes your code easier to change and will end up giving you few errors. Another principle that we will apply in our application is persistent ignorance. Ensuring that these domain classes are not influenced at all by the technology used to persist them is exactly what this principle is stating. This way, the domain we are modeling with our classes shouldn't be influenced by the technology. So you shouldn't clutter the domain classes with things like base classes that you need to inherit from or attributes that you need to apply to the properties. Applying this principle correctly ensures that the code isn't linked to any technology and gives you the freedom to store the entities wherever you want. You may be thinking, I have rarely seen a project where we decided to switch database technologies. While it happens, it might be rare but applying persistent ignorance can also be useful to store your entities first in the cache and then in the database. It basically doesn't matter where you store them. They are just plain objects. Finally, this is just an introduction to this key concept. It's not a detailed explanation or definition. This should give you enough understanding of the concept to apply them in your application architecture. If you have any question, please leave it in the comments below this video. In future video, I'll be talking about different application architecture style. Until then, stay tuned and happy coding.